Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight we are so excited to be joined by economist, lawyer, professor, presidential speech writer, multi-Emmy award-winning game show host, and actor, you know him, the legendary Ben Stein. Ben, uh, welcome to the show. So excited to have you on. Um, I feel like maybe there's going to be some sort of a, a test of some variety. I feel very out of my league in some respects talking to you, but I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, no, God you, bless you. God bless you. you. Well, thank you. Um, I would love to hear a little bit of your background because you graduated with honors from Columbia University. Then you went on to Yale Law School and you graduated as valedictorian. I mean, this is sort of incredible stuff. And then you ended up working in the White House for Richard Nixon. Tell me about your backstory here. This is very interesting. Well, and my backstory really is a, a wonderful backstory. Very few people in America are privileged to have the backstory I have. My father was a genius economist. He was really recognized as a genius when he was still in his teens. Uh, he, uh, uh, when he was in the Navy during World War II, he wrote an essay about uh, how the U.S. could uh, recover from the shock of the uh, end of the Navy procurement uh, boom without going into a depression. And this attracted a tremendous amount of attention for him. And uh, he uh, very, very quickly became the head of a group of extremely important uh, businessmen, scholars, union leaders, and uh, soon, very, very soon, uh, he was a, chair, a pre member and then a chairman of the President's Council of Economic Advisors. And uh, that was under President Nixon and then under President Ford. And uh, he uh, is sort of famous in the world of economics for being an anti-supply sider. That is, he believes that uh, if you're going to spend a great, great deal of money uh, on the part of the government, which the government does, of course, that you should have some taxes to pay for it. I personally don't like that because I don't like paying taxes. But my father was a much more patriotic citizen than I am. And he, uh, he did not mind paying taxes. In fact, he's the only person I've ever met who did not mind paying taxes. Wow. And, yeah, that's that's uh, pretty tough. That's a tough one. Very, Most people well, don't like it. He was a real patriot. Anyway, uh, and then uh, let's see uh, what after that. Well, I'd say the main event of my life was I married a simply beautiful, wonderful, super woman, just an absolute goddess. I uh, would not have believed it possible that a big nerd like me could have married someone <laughs> as beautiful as my wife, Alex, and a oh. literal, literal goddess. Uh, and then I uh, practiced law for a while after I got out of uh, law school. I taught for a while at a place called American University in Washington, D.C. Where did you go to university? I went to North Carolina State University. Oh, uh, one of my best friends went there. Wow. Fantastic. And a good Republican, a very, very good Republican. Well, someday, yeah. He will someday be governor of North Carolina. Anyway. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Russ Ferguson is his name and a uh, huge fundraiser for the uh, 16 campaign. And uh, he's a very, very impressive guy. Anyway, uh, and let's see, I moved out here uh, because I met Norman Lear. I don't know if you know who that is. Very, very super successful TV comedy producer. You moved out and to California. Yes, to, to be a, to be a, a, a screenwriter. And uh, why? Because I loved California living. I did not like New York living. I did not like riding the subway. I did not like riding around uh, with homeless people all around me. Uh, in those days, the subways were not air conditioned. It was just unbearable. Uh, and uh, I moved out here and I loved it right away. I loved, I've loved it ever since. I really have not ever spent a whole day wishing I were back east. Uh, although I do go east and I still have a home in Washington, D.C. Uh, but I'm just, uh, I, I'm, I had an unbelievably lucky fortune in L.A. It's unbelievably lucky. I met a man who uh, put me uh, in a movie called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes. And I had an incredibly famous scene in that in which I thought I was giving the students a real serious lecture about the history of economics in America. 
and I thought it was just great. And they the kids applauded when I was done. The students extras they hire high school students to be extras, and uh, and uh, uh, John Hughes, who was the uh, producer and writer and director, said, "You're great. Uh, have you done any Broadway?" I said, "No, I've never done anything like that. I have no training as an actor." And from then on, I worked very steadily. Uh, and uh, that's sort of my story. Now, I will tell you, since we're, we live in the age of cancel culture, yeah. that uh, my career has been very, very negatively uh, uh, affected by being a Republican, a conservative, a person who wants to have a balanced budget. And uh, I am just uh, tortured all the time by people who don't like uh, conservatives. And I'm tortured all the time, I will tell you frankly, by being a fan of uh, President Trump. And uh, uh, But you know, I, I, I work for Nixon. I've long, long, long become accustomed to people treating me like dirt because I work for Nixon and, and uh, for being a conservative. I learned to live through it and uh, I live through it. I live here in a very comfortable way. The only thing that really matters in my life is to have my wife. And as long as I have my wife, it really doesn't matter what happens to me. I, at present, I live a life of astonishing luxury. Uh, I imagine you know what that is like far better than I do. I'm just <laughs> I don't know about that. All uh, I know that is that if my husband ever says that all he needs is, is me, I mean, I love it. I'm going to send this to him and make sure he sees this so he yes, knows I the right answer to that well, question if ever asked, because I think that's it, a very important. It is a very important question. My Last night, I was uh, feeling kind of uh, drowsy, I think, from I'll be honest about this, from eating a huge amount of fudge. And uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of fudge. And uh, I was just lying in bed looking at my wife's face. And my wife would occasionally open her eyes and look at me with a look of such tenderness and such love, and I thought, any man who has a wife who will look at him with that kind of look, he is, he's hit a home run. Man, well, I, I feel like we've gotten a lot of information. I, too, am a fan of fudge, so I can fully appreciate where we're going with that. I want to go back because there, there's a lot going on in your story. I mean, you've, uh, you certainly seem like a, a jack-of-all-trades, so to speak. You've done quite a few different things, and you're very and, and talented I, that, in many ways. Well, you're very kind. The things I've told you about that I've done are probably 2% of I'm my sure. time. I'm sure. Exactly. 98% of it is teaching about law, yeah. teaching economics, teaching about the political culture of movies and television shows, and above all, being an expert witness in very, 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 very complicated securities lawsuits. Oh, wow. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, now I know who to call if I need that. I want to ask you about President Nixon. You, you, because... you, you really do, by the way. <laughs> okay. Well, mm -hmm. good noted. Um, you say that President Nixon was nothing like the man uh, the media portrayed him to be. Not, uh, obviously not nothing. unlike Donald Trump. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, uh, the thing that's most ap apparent right away is, as as life went, goes on, I wake up every morning, uh, is that both President Trump and President Nixon were kicked out of office for doing exactly nothing wrong. And it was just a uh, mob, a lynch mob, that was assembled on the word of some uh, words of some crank uh, people who happen to be highly placed in the media. Now, how these crank people got to be highly placed in the media, that's a very good story. And I don't know the answer to it, but I think it happens that uh, in the 30s, the, the 1930s, a great many extreme left wingers, let's call them, let's be honest, communists, uh, made their way into academic life, and they uh, they uh, just co-opted more and more people who are like them to be in academic life. Uh, in the 50s, we took a break from that and uh, went back to a more conservative America. Uh, but then in the 60s, we came back with a storm of anti-establishment, uh, anti-Republican uh, attitudes by the media. And I mean, when I say anti-Republican, I mean burn the place down and uh, 
go crazy. The real, really serious hatred of uh, conservatives. Well, it feels and, feels a lot like where we are today. Well, yeah. it, it's it's very much. It, it was worse. It was even worse. Wow. Bad, as bad as it is now, it was even worse because in in when I was in law school. We used to have uh, students, students, that, not uh, homeless people who came in off the street, students who wanted to kill the professors. And I don't mean kill them in the sense of saying, oh, I don't know the answer to this question, I haven't read this question, read the case. I meant take out a gun and shoot them. And that was a very scary place to be. Clearly, yeah. I mean, let me ask you this, though. You're still currently a professor? No, I am not. I am no. not. Absolutely, I am absolutely not. The last time I was well, a professor was, uh, I, I don't remember the year, but it was roughly 10 years ago. And uh, I taught a course uh, in various different subjects, mostly about just a su survey of current issues. And then the, when the man who was running that uh, program passed away, uh, they sort of passed away the, with the program. And then we, that, that was one of the last pro-conservative classes we had at Pepperdine, at Pepperdine, mind you, a yeah. Church of Christ school. And uh, it was, as my wife would say, heart-rendering to see that even Pepperdine, a very conservative school, was uh, leaning towards the left. Well, what do you see with the trajectory of, especially our colleges and universities? Because I mean, to so many, they sort of feel like indoctrination camps at this point. There is no, um, you know, alter alternative thought. There's no opposition. There's no uh, room where you can discuss different ideas. Where do you see us going? No place good. I don't see, uh, I see our, our university system is collapsing around us. Uh, we have a lot of hostility and anger towards the United States of America. It is a very scary thing that young people in America are taught to hate their country. Yeah. This, this is a sort of big difference between, I, I, I know you're, you, I'm guessing, are in your late teens. I, I am 77, yes. and uh, my, my, I will tell you that when I was a child growing up, uh, we loved America. We were taught to love America. And at home, we were taught to love America. We were considered to be subhumanly stupid and treasonous if we didn't help America, love America. What on earth was the point of living if you didn't love America? Love America came first and uh, last and everything, ev every other thought you had in your mind was trivial compared to the fact that you had to, had to, had to love America. Wow, and we've gone in quite the opposite direction. I, I mean, I cannot understand it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, even when it. even when I was in in school in, in elementary school, I remember the biggest honor was to get to the fifth grade because the fifth graders got to raise and lower the flag, the American flag outside of our school every day. And I remember thinking how great that was going to be when my time came to do that because I knew how important that flag was even as a kid. But it seems like our kids are taught something very different now. And, and obviously it's frightening. I have two young kids. Uh, as to where we're headed as a country and, and what the long-term implications are of teaching kids to hate this country instead of loving it. Clearly, if you are taught to hate something, you're not going to fight for it. If it's, you know, marginalized, if it's on, on the brink of changing into something that, you know, is terrifying to a lot of us, um, and maybe that's the, the overarching goal here. But obviously, I'd love to ask you, as an expert in economics, what do you make of our current economic situation in America it, right it's now. It's extremely, extremely puzzling and and strange. And it gets more puzzling and strange every day because yeah. uh, here's how it goes. It all started, if I may say this, I don't, I, I mean, I, I don't have a job with the Trump administration. I'm way too, <laughs> way too old and way, 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 way too old to have one in the future. But uh, things were going on quite smoothly from roughly 2017 to roughly 2020, quite, yeah. quite smoothly. And then something really stupid happened. Uh, President Biden, who I call president, I put quotes around it, uh, was, was uh, we have to write, was, was, was elected. And, yeah. uh, and uh, he kicked out the fire escape 
and uh, let everybody drown. And he did that by banning fracking. Now, fracking was a hugely important thing. A lot of people don't know what fracking is. Fracking is when you take gigantic, incredibly powerful streams of water and you push them into rock formations that have oil in between them. And that pumps out a lot of oil which can then be extracted, refined, and used as gasoline or diesel or whatever you want to use it as to power your car or truck and have it go racing down the highway at breakneck speed. That was a disaster because that meant that we are we were short a great deal of gasoline. We had this is this is something that most people have no idea of, and you're going to be the first person in mass media to have it come out. The U.S. Would, at the, around 2020 was using roughly, very roughly, 16 million ga- uh, barrels of gasoline a day. It's a lot. It's a hell of a lot. Of that, six million came from fracking. Wow. That's a huge percentage. Right. So if you kick out all the fracking, then you're short six million barrels. Now the U.S. had been in great shape with those six million barrels. We were able to export to Western Europe. We were able to export to Japan. We were even able to to export to Iron Curtain countries in the Southeast Asia. Now we have to go around kissing the ass of the uh, Iranians, kissing the ass of the uh, uh, all the oil producing states Mm -hmm. in the Middle East that don't like us very much to beg them for oil. And now Western Europe is in really bad shape because they just are not going to have enough hydrocarbons to burn this summer to keep their houses warm and their electricity plants going. And that's going to be a real problem, a real serious problem. Here in Southern California, where I am, it's not going to be that bad because we're going to have this wonderful, wonderful, glorious sunshine, which we can rely on for many things, but we're not going to have heated pools as well, I do have a heated pool, but we're not going to have heated pools that are, that are really too. Ha- you guys in California have had to deal with uh, kind of paring back your energy there. You, I mean, you're supposed to be keeping your houses, what, at 78 degrees and well, don't plug in your electric does. cars. Nobody, yeah, yeah, nobody does that. Nobody does that. Of course uh, they don't. No, of, of course, course they, they don't. don't. No, no, 78 and I'm sure- I would love to know, by the way, how keeping everyone's houses, if anyone actually paid attention to this and did it, which you're right, no one is doing, obviously, if that actually happened and you have a bunch of people, you know, kind of warm, maybe you're not super comfortable in your home, is that actually making a dent in the greenhouse gas emissions when you have China and India spewing out everything that they do on a daily basis, totally unregulated, I, I can't find the rationale in any of this, but the, the rationale the rationale is stupidity. Yes. The rationale is that we have a government, unfortunately, that is filled with environmentalists who don't know what they're talking about and uh, people who just hate America and don't know what and do know what they're talking about. They want to uh, make they want to castrate America. Oil is the lifeblood of freedom. There's a wonderful, 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 wonderful documentary about World War II on, you can get it by DVD anytime you want, called Victory at Sea. And one of the lines it says is that oil is the lifeblood of freedom because with lots of oil, you win wars. When President Biden, President Biden, said we're going to stop uh, having fracking, he meant we're going to have to start ex- importing oil from p- countries that hate us and want us dead. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, we run out of oil. And what? how are we going to defend ourselves? How are we going to defend ourselves with the strategic oil uh, storage facilities emptied of strategic oil reserves? We are running into some very, very dangerous situations here. And there's nobody out there telling the truth about it. We do need to preserve our strategic oil reserves. We do we do need to have fracking back again right away, not tomorrow, not the next day, right now. President Biden should be going before Congress and saying, Look, I'm an old guy. I can't think of everything all at once. I make mistakes. Yes, my state has incredibly good fried chicken. This is a fact. But 
I don't know much else except that Delaware has good fried chicken. Is and that right? I, it's true, it's incredibly good fried chicken. Oh. But, but it has, but what, I, what else I do know is that I better get some advice from somebody who knows somebody, and that, that person will tell me, sir, put fracking back. Yeah, and but, if, we put, but, if we put and, fracking back, we'd have enough oil. Of course. Well, and we could also uh, open back up the Keystone XL pipeline. Yes, uh, yes. We could, but then this would actually mean that these people who are in charge of our country right now, I use that term very loosely in charge because it's just like a free for all. They would have to admit that what they had done was a mistake, yes, that they're yes, hurting I'm America. Correct. And in some respects, some people believe maybe this is all part of the plan. Maybe they want to hurt America. They want everybody to be this homogenous group of countries. No one country better than the other. Open borders, all of it. What do you think? I think it's, it's, I think, I think it's it might be that bad. If it's that bad, it's treason. Yeah. I mean, at the worst, at the least bad, it's a serious mistake. At the worst, it's treason. And the, to me, it's getting to look more and more like treason. They, I mean, the evidence is just overwhelming that we need that oil. We did, it was not something to be thrown away lightly. We need that oil. What rationale did they have to stop us taking oil uh, uh, by, out of the earth by fracking. There was no rationale for it. The amount of air pollution created by fracking is trivial compared yeah. to the amount of air pollution made in China or India. Just any week they make a new coal-fired plant and we ignore their, their transgressions about energy and we instead punish ourselves very, very badly. And one thing Russia has is lots and lots of oil. That's yes, right. it's crappy, low grade, high, high, high sulfur quality, high sulfur test uh, gasoline, gasoline and oil. But it's going to be used. It'll burn. It'll light people's houses, and we are going to be stuck with the responsibility for people in uh, wherever, whatever part of the country they're in, saying we are short of oil and gas. Our cars won't run. Our houses are cold. Yeah. What the hell do we do? And you could you, go, you could go to President Biden and say, "Look, I know you have great fried chicken. We we give you full marks for your fried chicken, but for God's sake, the country runs on oil. It doesn't run on fried chicken. We've got to get some more oil out of the earth, and America has plenty of it. America is the Saudi Arabia of fracks oil. Why did they ever turn it off? There was never any evidence that fracking was hurting anything. We needed it desperately. Why did they do it? Why on earth did they well, do it? Well, they're banking on the fact that we live in a country um, that is sadly very uninformed, I think, on a lot of issues. And this is particularly the, what we're talking about right now with oil, with fracking, with all that. Most people, you're right, have no idea about fracking. Most people just turn on the TV and they listen to whatever nonsense is spouted off at them, whatever they've clicked through on their social media accounts that says, well, this is the only way we're going to save our planet, climate change, all of this. They really don't understand the implications of, of you know, what this has meant for our country, for the future of America. If we stay, you know, in this space where we are, you know, not exporting oil, where, where we are reliant on foreign countries for our oil. Look at the mess in Europe. Look at the Ukraine war. I can guarantee you that war would have never happened had Donald Trump remained president, had the Keystone Pipeline stayed open, had fracking stayed in place, had we been the exporter of oil like we were under President Donald Trump, had Joe Biden not uh, greenlit Nord Stream 2. All of it was just a, a huge, perfect storm that led to the war over there, that's led to now this issue they have in Europe. And these, you're right, people are going to be cold all winter over there. They're really going to have a big problem. And unfortunately, they only have themselves to blame. Well, they have us to blame, too. That's, I mean, that, we, too. They have, they have us to blame. I mean, it isn't a group of Germans or French or Italians who are doing this. It's a group of Americans, and Americans sometimes highly influenced by foreigners. But it, 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 there is no reason to do it except either 
hatred of America, which I would call treason or something very close to treason, yeah. or uh, just plain stupidity, which at some, at some point, I'm a lawyer, as you, as you mentioned at the beginning, at some point we lawyers say that if you make enough mistakes, even if you don't have it written down that I'm planning to do such and such, if you make enough mistakes that add up to an absolutely certain result, it's the courts will hold it to be intentional. Right. And so it's in, it was intentional. It was intentional that we would run out of oil. It was intentional that we would be very, very short of oil when we needed. My very, very best friend in Washington, D.C., who just passed away, a man who was a great, great, great man, the speechwriter in our back in street writer, street, street writer, White House speechwriter, I should have said, White House speechwriter, and he and he was saying in Washington D.C., a fairly temperate area, they're going to be suffering incredibly from shortages of oil. He passed away; it's not going to be affecting him. But uh, let us hope and pray that somebody in the White House wakes up. But meanwhile, where are the Republicans on this? I mean, I've been a Republican all my life. I don't know. I know. I, I, I know. I am guessing that you're in your early twenties. So you, I've been a Republican way, 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 way longer than you've been alive. And I can tell you, nobody would, dream, would have dreamed it possible that we would torture our oil industry, punish our oil industry make them feel like they were uh, not, but they didn't belong in the United States, just to please a group of dopey, fake environmentalists who don't know what they're talking about and never did. Why, yeah. why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? I mean, if you help your enemy, you can have all kinds of uh, stated reasons why you do. You can, you can say, oh, we are, we're doing it to protect this, we're doing it to protect that. That's all nonsense. They're, in this particular case, the results clearly tell the story of the intention. The intention was to hurt America. We don't like that. Why hurt America? America is the greatest thing that's ever happened to mankind. Why hurt America? Why are we doing this to hurt America? It's so, it's so upsetting. But you know what? You, you make so much sense. You have... Um, just, I wish more people got to hear a common sense approach. Someone with information like you talking about these issues, because unfortunately, most people don't get the real information. They just get some sort of garbage that, again, is spewed out there and, and whatever celebrity has posted it. I want to just really quickly go back to what you were saying earlier about the fact that you've sort of been blackballed within Hollywood since you know it very was very much sort so, of, very much you, so yeah i mean that what is that that is that's absolutely terrible first of all i'm sorry um <laughs> but you've you've been very Thank out front and outspoken and you didn't really have to be so what motivated you to do that the truth has a certain appeal telling the truth has a certain appeal my parents have a gravesite out in uh, falls church virginia because my parents have been in the washington area uh, and their families for a very long time. So, uh, and, and they have reserved two spaces for my wife and, and me and for our son, Tommy. And uh, on, on my gravesite, I'd like it to say he told the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth was, we need oil. There's no two ways around it. We need oil. We cannot let ourselves be taken in by the fake environmentalism of the fake patriots. They're, the patriots are the people who want us to have enough oil. We want to be swimming in oil so that we can export oil to Western Europe, so that oil, Western Europe does not have to kiss the ass of the Russians in order to get oil. We don't like the situation that's developed now. The, the Europe and Western Europeans are fine, not fine, they're sort of fine with it, but the, but the French, the Italians, even many of the British don't even, they don't even get it. And, and it's they who are going to get hurt even more than we will. England used to run on coal, and they ran fairly well on coal. Then people said, oh, coal is going to kill the environment. Okay, so they took away coal. They, they, were, they had tons and tons and tons of oil uh, off the coast of England and Scotland. That, they ran out, started running out of that. So that's a problem. Where the French have no oil to speak of, they have a lot of coal, but they have no, they have no oil to speak of. What are they going to do? What are, what do these countries think they're going to do 
without American fracked oil. What do they think they're going to do? I mean, do they think it's just going to come raining down oil and that's where we're going to get out of this? It's not going to happen. It's just, no. It doesn't happen. No, there, there seems to be no plan um, what, whatsoever. And no plan whatsoever. No yeah. plan whatsoever. Which is, which the is only right plan now. is that we're going to go to hell. I mean, the people who, the people who are uh, opposed to the uh, last administration and to, I hope, will be the future administration are people who do not want America to succeed. That's right. They do not want America to grow. They do not want America to be America the way we knew it. They do not want America to be the America that grew up strong and confident and leader of the free world. They want America to be dependent on the Russians and on the Middle Easterners who don't love us. That's right. Well, that's why we need to take midterm seriously. That's why we need to take 2024 very seriously. What's your prediction for the midterms this year? I don't know. It looked, it sure looked like we were going to have a very serious Republican uh, correction. Uh, but uh, now the media has done its usual stunt yeah. of uh, making Republicans seem like they're criminals. And, and by the way, that's another thing. What, why, do we, why do we let the media get away with this? Why do we let the media constantly hammer away people who are trying to help America and treat them like they're criminals and trying to hurt America? And just lie. They just lie. It's all lies. Oh, my That's God. That's the crazy part. Oh, From the much. White House press secretary to the mainstream media outlets, they're just filled with lies. And no uh, one gets called out and nothing gets corrected ever. It's amazing. What? Well, a, a little tiny bit gets corrected and a little tiny bits of, of magazines and, and newspapers after, the, a, after yeah. the fact. But where, where are the truth tellers to start with? I mean, when, when people are joining up into the media, why, where are the truth tellers? Why, what do, I mean, do, they, do the people who are interviewing to, to, uh, other uh, people for telling them to get jobs? I don't know. I really don't know. Do they say you cannot have this job unless you refuse to tell the truth? We've got to have truth tellers. I mean, this country is very, very, we're short of oil. Yes. We're short of workers. Yes. Where are the truth tellers? I'd like to see an ad saying we, we are hiring truth tellers. <laughs> They won't, get, they won't get many applications because they know that that's a way for them to make sure they don't get the job. Right. right. Well, that's right. It seems like the word journalist can no longer be applied to most people who work within the mainstream media complex. It is basically people are reduced to being political activists. And it seems like those are the individuals who seek out those jobs now and they have one goal in mind and it is not as you're saying, to tell the truth. It is not to make sure that people get the information, whether or not they agree with it, but whatever the truth is gets disseminated. That is not the goal and that's not what they want. They want their side to be all powerful. They want their side to have the final say and their side gets to be the truth tellers, whether it's true or not. It's really well, sad. It's, it's, it's Honey Bunch. Pardon me for calling you Honey Bunch, but you're so much younger than I am. I, 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 Madam, I should say, Ma, Mademoiselle. I'll go, I've been it's called hard, it's, we're it's fine. Hard, as my wife, my saintly wife, a goddess, would say, it's heart rendering. It is heart yeah. rendering that we Americans are being fed a constant diet of lies yeah. by the media. A, a constant, very, very rich in protein a basket of lies. It's terrifying. It's just yeah. terrifying. Yeah, I'm, you can't. I'm scared. I love, look, I love this country. I'm a Jew. My ancestors came from Europe. They, they a long time ago, I'm happy to say, because they've been, they were here, they were not around Europe during the Holocaust, I'm happy to say. And so we got to live this comfortable, wonderful American way of life. I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that. For my children, I don't want to lose that for my wife. I don't want to lose that for anybody. I don't want to lose that for anybody, even people who are my respect. At this very moment, they are going to be, I don't know, leaving trash on my lawn. What's it called? Doxing or dossing or something like that? Probably. I, I just want to, I just want to like them to go away. I know, I, I, I understand we're running short of time. So I no, will leave you, I will leave you to your own devices. Well. 
I think I think you're in good company. I think many people feel the same way you do, and it's. Well, it is- I think they do, but uh, but but look, you and I, uh, uh, we have each other to talk to, but uh, in terms of getting onto the mass media, the really, really, really mass media, we don't. We, we're we're locked out. We, we might as well be uh, slave children on a galley, slave on a, a Middle East galley, slave children. It's it's terrifying. It's awful. All right, final question for you. Yes, I feel yes. like I know where I feel like I know where you stand on this, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Would you ever run for political office? No. Why or why not? Would you say liar? No, I would not lie. Run for political office. I don't want. I don't want to people yelling at me any more than they do. <laughs> I already got a tremendous amount of hate mail for oh. standing up for your father. I got a tremendous. Our father-in-law, I guess, is a tremendous amount of hate mail for still standing up for Richard Nixon. I just uh, get a tremendous amount of hate mail for standing up for people who stood up for America. Yeah, well, I I can appreciate that and I can respect that. And, uh, you know, despite what hate mail you get, despite the the blackballing, which is is absolutely terrible, there are a lot of people that uh, you'll probably never hear from who you know, really respect what you have done in coming out and speaking the truth and telling people how you feel about things, because it really does, I believe, encourage other people to be bold and brave and, and you know, kind of tell their own truth um, when the time is right. So so thank you for doing that. I know you didn't have to. Thank but- you. No, I, well, of course, I don't that's America. I don't have to do yes. anything. That's America. It is America. It is America. And, and yet I get to, I get to, and yet I get to do it. That's America. That, I love it. Now, what a way to end. Ben Stein, thank you for your time today. Thank you for joining us. God we bless appreciate you. it. God bless you. Keep up the fight. We'll fight right alongside you. God bless you, madam. God bless you. God bless thank you. you. God bless you. God thank bless you. Very God, bless you. God bless you. All right. To everybody at home, as always, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. We'll see you back here next time for more.